I think up until this stage there has not been very much um, care coordination between the acute setting and the general practice setting. So it's an increase in knowledge for general practice as well as an upskilling of nurses in their care planning um, to be proactive about their care coordination for patients and offering that to patients via the GP or the nurse, whoever's in the general practice. The best way for patients to ensure a smooth transition between acute care and general practice would be to have a survivorship um, plan in place. Um, and from a general practice point of view, we would really um, um, appreciate a comprehensive discharge summary. So having the full story of, of what happened, what took place and what's expected in terms of management um, on an ongoing basis would really help the um, general practice team, especially the practice nurse, to take um, even more ownership because it's one of the things that, that we're missing. Yeah, Take ownership of the management of cancer patients. The take home message is communication and I think that's often a, a bit of a disconnect when patients are moving from the acute sector back to home uh, and certainly when I was working in palliative care we found that a lot of patients spent so much of their cancer treatment time in the hospital that they weren't connected very well in with their GP so it's about getting that connection happening again and good communication between health professionals in different sectors. I guess the problem is uh, during treatment then people often disappear into the cancer system so we need to do a better job um, from a hospital perspective of communicating with general practice so that people aren't lost uh, but people are encouraged to continue to see their general practitioner to deal with the other, uh, other issues that general practice uh, is well placed to deal with. The tools that we have in place I think is the chronic disease management plan. We can adapt that to survivorship phase and put that in place for patients and that can incorporate all aspects of their care. An ideal tool to um, support cancer patients in their um, survivor um, stage is um, GP management plans and team care arrangements, what's known as care plans in general practice, because they allow us access to a lot of allied health services, but they actually provide the model to, um, to, to give um, comprehensive management um, of their condition in a way that is including the patients and that's really customised and tailored to the needs and problems that these patients are having. Having a really good awareness of the issues around survivorship and certainly by um, being directed to ring the helpline, the nurses on the helpline are very well trained in survivorship, survivorship issues and very aware of them. And I think often just normalising those um, concerns and emotions that people are going through is very helpful. So again, it's about good communication and tools to ensure good communication. Um, I guess it's also about setting up some expectations and so having some expectations early on in the, uh, the treatment phase that people will have care in the community and that's important. Making sure that general practitioners, primary health care nurses have the information, the knowledge, the skills to be able to, to do that, have that function. And I guess that a, a major tool at the end of treatment or towards the end of treatment is the use of survivorship care plans. And we hope that survivorship care plans will be an effective way um, of making people aware of what comes next. Um, so it will be useful for survivors, for carers and for um, all of the health professionals so that we're clear about whose role it is to do what and follow up and what, what to expect. I think we can assure patients that their needs will be met if we give them coordinated care, again through their care planning and through just raising it with them um, that, that we are on the same page as what their specialists have been. More than just receiving specialist letters, we need to be more in contact and care coordination through the chronic disease management plans can, can have that effect. I think as nurses, the, the best way to ensure patients' needs are met is asking them one, um, finding out from them what their needs are, what do, what do they perceive their needs to be. Also being really well informed as to what are the, the likely challenges that these patients are going to be facing, um, the problems, side effects, um, knowing the common concerns that this, this patient group is likely to, to encounter could help us then collaborate with patients and also know preempt what um, support services or resources to offer them. 
Certainly survivorship in um, primary health care is going to be a, an in increasing area in the future because we know that we have a higher incidence of cancer um, with an ageing population but also a, a greater um, survivorship which is fantastic news but probably not enough health professionals to, to look after that cohort of patients um, and it would be really good if those patients could be cared for in the community rather than back in the, the tertiary hospital setting. Um, better for them and better for the health dollar as well. I think it's critical that we do have a process to identify people's needs. If we don't know what the needs are then we can't help people and so we do need structures to do that. Uh, certainly uh, at the end of treatment then uh, having some sort of needs assessment that might be hospital based and identifying what are the issues for that particular person. But at the same time, we can empower um, patients, consumers to, uh, to recognise what their issues are themselves. Uh, we've used question prompt lists. Um, we know that they can be effective. We know that they increase question uh, uh, asking of questions. Uh, and also it gets um, the patient's agenda um, in the forefront. Um, so we need, to be, we need tools that allow people uh, to say what their issues are and so that we can address them. Some of the challenges are that it really hasn't come onto the radar very much in general practice. We, we have seen you know, patients be referred off to specialists, to oncologists, to whoever for their care, and we occasionally get them come back into general practice, but we haven't really seen it in a coordinated fashion, and I think that's one of the issues we need to deal with. Conditions like diabetes and asthma tend to take centre stage, so there's um, a real lack of knowledge um, and awareness and understanding of um, ca cancer treatment, but also it just tends to be a bit of a, a taboo subject. We just sort of send them off to the specialist and the cancer services will look after them and um, then we'll just see them for everything else. One of the biggest challenges is that the small number of people that they currently see through their practice in a year, and we learnt today that that's about 16 people with cancer, so um, there is, I think, a degree of fear around um, feeling that they're not equipped to, to care for people with a diagnosis of cancer. So I think it's being aware of uh, other resources that are available to them and working in a team and knowing who to refer people to when issues arise. There are concerns and we set, we've certainly set up an expectation with, with cancer patients and survivors that they'll have a lot of their care uh, with specialists and in the hospital. So if we want to challenge that and recognise that primary care um, is well uh, suited and can do this, then we need to make sure that uh, patients accept that, that specialists accept that, uh, that general practitioners are prepared and we can't possibly expect a GP who sees one person with lung cancer and one person with prostate cancer to know the whole of management of all types of cancer. So we need to be able to provide people uh, in primary care, whether that be medical staff, nursing staff, with the information that they need. Mm -hmm.